and it goes right into uh, what we're talking about today, and that is accepting positivity. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there thinking, yeah, I accept positivity all the time. What are you talking about? So let me just throw out some names. Bill Gates, Koch Brothers, Oprah Winfrey, President Obama, George Bush, um, Warren Buffett. I would imagine that some of you, depending on what name I said, had a visceral response. When we hold other people hostage because of what they believe, or who they are, or how much money they have, you know who we're doing damage to? Ourselves. Ourselves. Everybody is, um, has the right to have as much money as they choose. Here's the other thing. Everybody has the right to spend their money exactly as they choose to spend it. Whether I agree with how they're doing it or not is none of my business. Because if we are all the power and presence of God, regardless of it, if it's George Bush, Bush or Barack Obama, there too is the presence of God. And how do you think that divine presence sees those two people? Absolutely the same. Absolutely the same. Because when you take everything away from um, who, who they are as far as pre former president of the United States, president of the United States, a man that lives in Texas, a man that comes from Chicago, um, both family men. When you take all of that away, all of the um, clothes that they wear, all of the labels that we give them, there is the power and presence of God in form. When we get that, then it won't matter who's got money. It won't matter who's in office. Because when we get that, when we come from that place, and I'm not talking just about people in this room, everybody, when we start to break down those barriers, that's when things like war stop. Because you can't have war with God in form, regardless of what his or her religious belief is. You just wouldn't do it. And so it's getting to that place and tapping into, we all come, regardless of our religious beliefs, regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of who we choose to be in relationship with. We are all here for the same reason. And that is the expansion of our consciousness. Bless you. So how many, or how many veterans do we have in the room? Would you please stand? I would like everybody, regardless of your beliefs, put your hand over your heart. Bless you for your service, each and every one. Thank you so much for having the courage um, to be of service. Bless you. Thank you. If we can't bless each other, we're blocking our own flow. And so if you want greater things in your life, whether it be prosperity, money, or whether it be more friends or a relationship or better health, whatever that is, if you are holding other people hostage because of who they are, you're blocking your flow. And it will manifest out in your body somehow. It will manifest out in the fact that you won't be able to get that money. You'll work hard and you'll think, why? You know, where's my good? You're blocking your good because you're holding other people hostage. So positive, positive energy. We talk about it all the time. And, and I have said this many, many Sundays. I wish I could tell you that I am just the realm of positivity. And that's not true. <laughs> it's not. I practice. I practice. Some days I'm way better than other days. And, you know, like everybody else, we can be little judgment machines. I was going to look up online and, and I forgot. I wanted to find out why, why a psychologist. I was going to look and say, why do we go to judgment first? You know, there has to be something um, that, because I think we all do it. 
And it's not discernment, it's judgment. And so why do we do that? And, and I'm sorry that I didn't look that up. Maybe next week I'll have an answer, I don't know. But it is sh shifting the energy. Can you go from judgment to discernment? We all don't look alike. And so what happens, because we are inundated with so much information, especially now with all of our technology, <coughs> that when we see something, we automatically file it somewhere. Did we have a good experience with somebody who looked like that person? If so, then we're going to assume that that is a good person. If we had a bad experience, we may assume that that's not a very good person. And yet, can we just go, ah, oh, a person. That's a person. I need to look at that more deeply because I've got some sort of reaction here. Instead of making them wrong, I've got a reaction. It's mine. That's what we forget. Nobody pushes your buttons. They try. The successful people, they get you to react. But the truth of the matter is, they're your buttons, and if you don't want to react, you don't have to. And so when we react, and we react from that energy of, um, I don't like, or you hurt my feelings, or whatever that is, when we react from that, then we create that energy out into the world that blocks us. And so what about surrender? Surrender is another positive thing to do, to accepting positivity. I surrender. And a lot of people will think, I surrender. Hell no, I'm not going to surrender. <laughs> I have my beliefs. I'm not going to surrender. What are you talking about? I'm not talking about surrendering to someone. I am talking about surrendering to something. Something that is greater than who you are in this human form. I don't care what you call it. You can call it God, you can call it spirit, you can call it diva. Not diva. Deva, thank you. I was like, diva, really? <laughs> I guess I could. It doesn't get offended. Deva, thank you. Goddess, whatever you want to call it. I knew right away, oh, you've gone down a path you wish you would. Um, <laughs> Whatever that is, whatever you choose to call it, it is bigger than you are. Surrender to that. Because when you surrender to that, I promise the floodgates open. Your will, not mine. Because your will, not mine. My will is my ego. And I don't know about you guys, but we, we dance, me and my ego. We dance a lot. And so it's recognizing that. That when I am doing that dance with my ego, that um, then there's a lot of expectations. There's a lot of, um, you're wrong, I'm right. There's a lot of, well, how dare you? There's a lot of diva in the ego. <laughs> Just so you know. That's where she came from. <laughs> so whatever that is, it's recognizing that I surrender to the power and presence of God within me. That was a mantra that when I first walked through these doors, not these particular doors, doors very similar, that I used to say that every single day, a hundred times a day. I surrender to the power and presence of God within me. My higher self, show me the way. Show me the way. And it's powerful. And what it does is if you keep saying that, in a meditation, walking down the street, I used to say it when I was driving my car. Sometimes other words would take over. We all know that about me and my car. Um, and I, it's a practice. Again, I'm still practicing. Um, and it calms. It settles you in. And what I know to be true is when you start to say that, then you get those moments of brilliance. Those, those ideas of you're like, wow, I have no idea where that came from. And so Paul was sharing with me this morning, he has a friend who lives in Santa Cruz, and his sister was, um, had gone to Tahoe. They're considering moving to Tahoe. And she was sitting, and she was about ready to go home. She's thinking, i got to get back to Santa Cruz. And this lady walked up to her and said, excuse me, are you here by yourself? 
And she's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> she said, well, and she started to ask her some questions and they had this conversation. And this lady said to her, are you looking for a job? And she said, well, you know, I applied for one. It was about three or four months ago. Um, I never heard back. She said, go there now. And so she was like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, the, and then they hugged. And she said it was like she could feel the vibration of love through her whole body when this woman hugged her. This woman didn't say, could I read your palm? Could I have uh, $6 because I just gave you a good idea? Just give me a hug. And, and what she felt was love. And so she decided to stop by that, this place. And so she walked in and the owner was there and she talked to the owner and um, the owner said, well, you know, I'm the owner and I don't do the hiring. However, if you wait and you come, if you can wait, my person's coming. She goes, you know, I'd love to and I need to get back to Santa Cruz so I can't. And then she went and got in her car and I think in that moment she surrendered. So she was sitting in the parking lot when her phone rang and the woman who does the hiring said, you know, are you close? Could you come back? I'm here, and she said, I'm in the parking lot. It'll take me 10 seconds to come upstairs. That is divine in intervention. That are the, those are the miracles that happen in your life all the time when you stay open to receiving. Now, she did the interview. She may or may not get the job. If the interview went really, really well. But that is that surrendering. Your will, not mine. And then there's, to, to really get this positive energy, there's a little thing that stands in its way called fear. False evidence appearing real. Oh, I couldn't possibly do that. I, I couldn't possibly, what would I say? What would I do? I'm too old, I'm too young. My hair's not the right color, I should probably get my nails done. I, you know, whatever the story is we tell us that stops us right where we are. And the thing is, the, the, the truth of the matter is fear, unless, of course, you are being chased by a, a saber-toothed tiger, fear is your ego trying to stop you from your greatness. So if you've got fear about your next step in life, that's not real fear, in my opinion. That is your higher self going, come on, come on, the next step. And your ego going, nope, we're pretty comfortable right here. Thank you very much. So like that woman who was in, um, in Lake Tahoe, she could have let her fear take over. She could have thought, you know, that, that woman was wacko. I'm just going to get in my car and I'm going to go home. And then she never would have got the interview. <coughs> because fear stops us. And fear can look like your best friend friend, or your relatives, or whoever that is that says, oh, you don't want to move to Santa Fe. It's too expensive. There's no jobs. Why would you do that? You don't know anybody. You don't want to do this business. Everybody's doing that business. You couldn't possibly succeed. Do you know how many life coaches there are in Santa Fe? Why would you want to do that? And that's you calling forth those people to tell you that. Don't blame them. Don't blame them. If you weren't opening to hearing what they had to say, or if you didn't believe it just a little tiny bit, then it would have no effect on you. And that's fear. If I listened to everybody that, listened, that lived in Seattle, Washington, why I shouldn't come to Santa Fe, I would still be in Seattle. If I had listened to everybody who told me, do not open a center in Santa Fe, there already is one, then we wouldn't be here today. And fear can stop you. And my suggestion is leap. Have you ever heard that? Leap. The net will appear. And sometimes you will get so close to the ground that you will panic. I promise I have been there. And then all of a sudden it's like... You don't think it was scary the first time I opened up the doors to my house and said, come on in, we're doing service in my living room? <laughs> Seriously? It was frightening. And then you have the next Sunday, 
And the next Sunday, are they going to show up? Am I doing a good job? Is the music okay? You know, you can play havoc with yourself. And then I had to sit down and say, okay, you and I have an agreement. If I'm not supposed to be doing this, show me I'm not supposed to. Otherwise, full speed ahead. And so far, I have got no indication that I'm not supposed to be doing this. And I'm really happy about that because I love what I'm doing. I absolutely love it. This is my passion. And what, do I, what I want to give to all of you is, what's your passion? You know, I think there was a quote, I think, hang on just a minute. No, I didn't copy that. I didn't use that one. So it's, um, okay, squirrel, because the thought just went out of my mind totally. All right, I have another one that's even better, transcending fear. And you'll recognize this one because this is by Bob Dylan. You got to serve somebody. You're going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve the devil, but you're going to serve somebody. Now, in this philosophy, nobody freak out and run for the doors. So what does he mean? I'm going to serve the Lord. Are you going to serve your passions and yourself? Are you going to create heaven right here on earth? Or are you going to serve the devil? And the devil is your, it's not a bad thing. However, the devil is that part of you that wants you to stay stuck right where you are, because it's comfortable. It's comfortable doing the same thing over and over and over again. But one day you're going to wake up and go, what happened to my life? What happened to my life? And so I can encourage you, serve that higher self. If you want to call it the Lord, great. If you want to call it your higher self, great. If you want to call it by name, call it Carol. Call it Maya, call it Kat, call it Paul, or Java Bean. Um, you know, call it your name, because that's who you are. That's who you are. And then the last step is, instead of us constantly looking at what's wrong in the world, I don't know about you, but we hear it all the time, why don't we start making lists of what's right? What if we decided, I'm going to be that change maker. Every day, I'm going to write down what's right with the world, what's right with my life, and what's right with me. Imagine the energy shift. Remember last week I said, it takes less people thinking positively to shift the energy than it does for all the people thinking negatively. So if it takes less of us, we're not doing our job. Because right now, I think they're doing a major job. They being negative thinkers. I don't care what they look like or anything else. They being, they get caught up in, oh my God. Oh my God. This is awful. The sky is falling. No, it's not. It really is not. And if you can grab onto that, you can create a life that not only works for you, it's going to work for the world because we're going to shift the energy of everybody around us. One person at a time. That person would be me. Let's pray. So feeling the energy of this room, the delight, the love, just allowing that to seep into every cell of my being knowing that there truly is that power, that presence that is God. It is magnificent. And it is not a house divided against itself. It is only one. And it is that container that holds all of us in our humanness. And so I know this one exists in and through and as me. It exists in and through and as all things everywhere. For it just is. And so I declare right here and right now, That power and that presence of love that radiates out from me, from you if you choose, ping-pongs around this room, finds a way to ping-pong around Santa Fe, and then starts to expand out. <coughs> because really, if there is no time and space in God, we can ping-pong anywhere we choose with our love, just by knowing 
I am the power, the presence of God in form. And I surrender to that, to that love, to that joy, to that knowing. And so I give thanks for this knowing, for this community, for this fabulous day already. <clears throat> knowing it's only going to get better because I expect nothing less. And it is in that divine expectation that I release these words into the law, knowing as they are spoken, it is already so. It is done. The universe has said yes, so I let go as I let God, and together we say loudly, and so it is. Namaste.